Hi everybody, this is Kefren, your favorite French Canadian. Today I'm going to show you a brand new guide on the Nvidia app for 2025. A lot of stuff going on for the past month, so uh, now I'm going to do a global guide for all the parameter and we're going to look, take a look of it. So let's start with it. First of all, make sure that you have your latest driver over there. So make sure that you do your update and you have the latest version. Now we're going to go to the graphics check section. Before starting with program setting, we're going to go with your global setting and they add a bunch of stuff uh, for the last release. So we're going to take a look at this. So first of all, DLSS override model preset. This one is pretty huge. You can now use it globally before you had to go to a game, look for it and push the DLSS by yourself. Now you can do it manual, uh, manually, but for your your global settings. So by default, you have the use 3D application settings like this. Press latest, apply. So now all your game that is compatible with DL DLSS will push the latest version of it. So sometimes, I don't know, you're playing a game, they're using a DLSS 3.1. Now you're going to use the latest model from the DLSS 4. So that's pretty cool if your uh, GPU is compatible for sure. But still, this one is really, really nice. You can do the same thing with your super resolution mode. So you can do it uh, globally. So for example, if you're always playing quality mode in your DLSS, select quality and apply. You can also use a custom if you want, if you want to create some ultra quality. So for example, 80%. And you go for it and globally it will push it uh, to all your games if depending on the game sometimes you like to play quality sometimes balance depending on your fps just use the 3d application and change that setting inside of the game also dsr factor this one is pretty cool i i was not a fan of the legacy scaling over there uh, of the quality of it but honestly the dl scaling now is pretty good good i recommend to activate uh, them so you're gonna create a virtual resolution if we can say so for an example i'm adding this one and this one so in game i can select if i want uh, the, the 4k resolution and just apply it to my game uh, for sure it's gonna tank your fps you will see it and also your gpu you usage if you have room to a uh, spare room honestly definitely test that out when you're playing a solo game don't go at 100 of your uh, gpu usage because you will add input lag so make sure that you're at like 96 97 percent uh, uh, usage and also what you can do for example you can push this resolution play that in the game and also use dlss on it to save some fps so you can do really good stuff and honestly it's better than native um so definitely test that test this out don't do that on warzone the bf6 valorant and stuff like that you know pvp game it's more like you want a cool experience you're playing a solo game this one can be really nice to use smooth motion this one is new um you have frame generation, everybody knows about frame generation, and it's not necessarily compatible with all uh, the GPUs. You need a series 4000 or 5000, but now they added smooth motion. We can say it's a little bit like looseless scaling, if you know that, or AMD fluid motion. So they, you're going to add, you're going to insert a frame between two frame and it's driver base. So you can optimize your FPS sometimes like 40% boost. So that's pretty cool. But honestly, it's really it or miss. Sometimes I, I was seeing a lot of artifacting, uh, uh, a big input lag. Sometimes it's working well. So definitely do some uh, testing. So it can be nice on game that doesn't have uh, frame generation. So you just apply your smooth motion. And also, if you don't have frame generation, you can use that and it will really help for your FPS. I'm not a fan to use smooth motion on the global setting. I recommend to go with program settings. So do it manually for each game that you want to do because uh it, yeah sometimes it's not working well and sometimes you don't need it so you don't want to use it so definitely use the program setting for uh this one low latency mode i recommend to go with on max frame rate i like to lock my fps uh, with nvidia app i'm using g-sync so for example if you have a monitor that uh, is 240 hertz you need to make sure that you always run your fps lower than 240 hertz so that's why i'm locking at 200 37 and uh, with that i'm always keeping my uh g-sync range and also I always make sure that i'm not have a crazy amount of gpu usage because i just unlock my fps so this one is really really cool to use for example if you have a 144 hertz monitor lock your fps at 141 and it will do the work 
Power management mode, I know a lot of people is, is saying to use prefer maximum performance. I did some testing in games with 3D Mark and stuff. Don't use that. Use normal. You're going to get better boost clock, longer boost clock. Temps are, are better, so the algorithm will manage uh, better your GPU. So don't use the other one. Shader cache size. This one, uh, if you install a lot of game on your computer, I recommend to use 10 gig or even 100 gig if you have the space. If you're using default, I think it's 5 gig by memory. Uh, but uh, if you don't have the space, they need to uh, erase it. It will rebuild your cache. Sometimes it's causing stuttering, corruption in your uh, cache. So I'm not a fan of it. If you can use 100, go 100. If you can use 10, just go with 10. After that, that's pretty much it. VSync, just use this. Anyway, VSync, you don't want to activate in, in any game. And if you're playing very old game, they add a new tab, Show Legacy Settings. So you can like force FXAA and stuff like that. So that's pretty cool. I think before you, you had to go to the control panel to use that. Now you can do it in your NVIDIA app. Now let's go to the settings section. So if you want to activate your G-Sync, this is pretty much where you do it. Uh, me, I'm using the full screen and Windows. So sometimes, uh, for example, if you're playing Borderless and, and stuff like that, you need to make sure that you're using both. Also, make sure that you select the monitor that you want to activate G-Sync. And also on your monitor itself, you will need to activate your G-Sync to make sure it's working properly. You have also a new parameter called surround. So for example, if you have two or three screen and you just want one image, you can now do that with surround. So I don't know, you're playing flight simulator, racing game, and you want to merge your image. This is the way that you can do it. In display properties, this one is really important. Make sure that your resolution is at native and also make sure that you're using the proper refresh rate. I know a lot of people, they're buying an eye refresh rate monitor. Windows push uh, by default 60 Hertz and they think they're using the eye refresh rate. <laughs> so really important to do that. I know a lot of people who did that. Uh, and after that, t -t 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 color, color, if you bought uh, an HDR monitor, make sure, g just go look on your Google about your monitor. But normally you can run this one at 10 bit. For, for example, for mine, it's HDR. I have an OLED monitor. I'm using the IS preset for the color depth, RGB and dynamic range full. I know some uh, monitor or TV can use also 12 bits sometimes. So really important to make sure that you have your proper um, uh, settings over there because by default even if i put the new monitor on my computer and i plugged in uh, it was 8-bit and nothing changed so really important to do that by yourself last one is digital vibrance over there i like to play at uh, 55 so i'm just adding a five percent um it, it it will get it will give you a little bit more saturation. Your game will be less gray. It helps me in game like Unshowdown, Battlefield and stuff like that. So, but this is question of preference. If you don't like that, just stay at 50. Last parameter that I like to use, it's the performance tab, the power maximum. I, I'm going at 133. It gives uh, my GPU more wattage. Uh, so you're, you're getting longer boost clock. Normally, depending on your game, you can expect five to 7% boost in your FPS. Pretty much the same thing with your 3D mark, mark score, but uh, NVIDIA is using an algorithm. So if you don't have the space, the room on your GPU, you have bad thermals, it's, it's gonna do nothing. So I recommend to stay at 100%. But if you have a pretty good card with good cooler and you're at, at like 62 degrees when you're playing a game, definitely push this one at max and uh, it will help with boost clock. You will have longer boost clock. It's not an overclock. Your boost clock will not be higher, but they will be longer. So this is pretty much it. What the last parameter is your NVIDIA overlay. They add a couple of cool stuff if we're looking at it uh, in statistic. For example, now you have the DLSS option so you can see uh, the mode that you're using for frame generation, uh, your uh, uh, also super resolution, the preset that you're currently using. So that's some cool stuff that you can do if you want to see your FPS usage and stuff like that. For me, NVIDIA overlay, it's a hit or miss. Sometimes it's causing stuttering, so I'm not necessarily a fan of it. If you're a streamer and you're using OBS, sometimes also you can have issue with it. And if you're struggling with your FPS, I don't re recommend to use NVIDIA overlay. Use just MSI Afterburner or something like that. But I want to tell you, they always update it. You can do a lot of stuff with that. Record, take pictures, stream, uh, look at your uh, FPS. So it's, it's a cool feature, but when you have issue, look at <laughs> your NVIDIA overlay. Uh, a lot of time it's because of that. 
So this is pretty much it, guys, for my NVIDIA app guide uh, for 2025. If you have any questions, just comment in the YouTube section. Post me your rig and also your GPU, because depending on the GPU, some uh, parameter you will have. Sometimes you will not, uh, depending on the model. And uh, I will try to help you the best that I can. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Peace.